So right now, yeah, see Mario's bumping up. He wants to play his own game, that little scampy devil. Oh, so <laughs> he's just going through the attract modes. Yeah, but I'll, I'll give it a oh, second. Bubble like, bobble. Oh yeah, so this thing has a fucking ton. Um, this was Switch's Christmas gift to me. Uh, very nice. Uh, I would not have bought this on my own because it's sixty dollars for a a thing I could make for like ten. But I do gotta admit, um, it is. It's definitely cute. The console itself is like the fucking size of a of my hard drive. Like. <laughs> It is the tiniest goddamn console. I won't deny, it is really cute. It is really cute and pretty sturdy. I am definitely going to be modding the fuck out of this to put other games on it. Yeah, but like, if you bought this just to play the Nintendo games... I you're getting really hosed. Don't. Just to play yeah. the 30 that are already like, on here. If you're going to buy a compilation, you have to have something extra. Uh, the only thing is, the process of doing that is basically, like, get a suspend point save for... Uh, Mario Brothers won at like a specific spot and That's then... not a feature though <laughs> Like you can do literally this is just an emulator and like a fancy No, I mean I'm I mean... sorry. I'm, I'm not gonna shit all over your Christmas skin. I mean <laughs> I'm talking about the process of hacking it To hack it you have uh -huh. to get like a save file a suspend file in Mario Brothers 1 in like a specific area then hook it up then put a ton of Russian code onto your uh any and yes many and then it, it will, well and then it will let you put your own roms onto it uh sana tukai this is uh the nes mini classic that everyone has been trying to blow nintendo to get yeah uh so do i yeah, actually they made like six units i i have a, a homemade raspberry pi uh my i don't have it built in an nes i do want to make one that's built into a, an nes cartridge though but I do have a Raspberry Pi, but this was a Christmas gift from one of my friends, so, you know, I figured give it a shot. So here, if we don't touch anything for a while, this is the attract mode on, this is like the screensaver on the uh, console itself, which is pretty damn adorable. It's gotta get the credit, this is a lot more fun than any UI from like a Linux-based emulator. Yeah, although you can make some pretty cool ones with Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I love the Pi. I've never had one myself, but they are so fucking cool. Oh, they are tightest. The only thing that's tough with the Raspberry Pi is getting it to emulate sound properly. Because you yeah. have to like, you have to have a really powerful processor to have it do that. And uh... Uh, otherwise, you're better off just plugging speakers into it. Yeah, as a standalone, I'll say this, as a standalone, it is tentatively worth 60 bucks. You have to love every, <laughs> it's 30 games, and you, so, okay, if you don't touch anything for a while, it'll, like, Mario will go around hitting, um, games to start their attract mode, like, Mario Brothers 2. But in any case... Uh, here's what it's got on it. There are some good ones on here, but not all 30 of them are slam dunks. So we got Balloon Fight, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania, Castlevania 2. See, that's what I mean. Eh, something pretty, pretty damn spectacular. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of the, uh, arcade, um, ports, NES ports of arcade games. Which, um, I kind of, like... I actually really like this for my own reasons, because if you kind of like, <laughs> uh, listen, there's a YouTube series I really love called Let's Compare, and what they do is they basically take like Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Galaga, they'll take a classic arcade game and go through every home console port of that game. So like, Oh, that's awesome! The first stage of Donkey Kong in arcade. Then ZX Spectrum, then Atari, then like um, Panasonic, whatever, all these different consoles. And watching those side by side, you can see like the sacrifices some of these things made to try and emulate it perfectly. How even if, if it looked really good and ran really slow, if it looked, uh, it, you know, the stages might be cut in half. Uh, and it took a really long time for them to get any arcade near perfect ports of these games. And I don't know, it's Tom. You look at all the stuff they released on the ZX Spectrum. Oh, yeah. That was shit hot. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, nothing beats uh, Dragon's Lair on like a Commodore 64. Nothing and beats the- that one channel sound. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But in any case, in any case, for the most part, um, the NES arcade classic series, which is what these ones are. These were, like, all released at 1987 when the console came out. And these were all, like, some of the first, like, legitimately some of the best console ports of any arcade game. Like, even among consoles that came out at this time. So I respect them for that. I don't think that they should have been included on the same price range as, like, Final Fantasy 1 or Double Dragon. But again, that's, that's me. Speaking of, um, Don Kong Jr., uh, Double Dragon 2, which I don't... Has anyone ever played Double Dragon 1? Yeah. Oh, I've, I, I have, have never... Not. I have never seen that, like, anywhere. That looks like a really 80s cover, though. Oh, it is such an 80s cover, but I love it. <laughs> uh, it's a it's an 80s as fuck game, too. Uh, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, the original Final Fantasy, which, man, this game's a slog and I love it. Uh, Galaga, my favorite arcade game. Oh, it, it's even got the subtitle, Demons of Death. <laughs> uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Galaga was a pretty dark game. Those were dark times. Yeah, it, they took your ship and you had to free it, or if you fucked up your shot like some people did, you killed your own buddy. Um, <laughs> Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus... Kirby's Adventure, which we are... That's my boy. We're going to try... Me and Poloko are talking about doing some things with Kirby's Adventure in the near future. Uh, Mario Bros. <laughs> Mega Man 2. Metroid. Ninja Gaiden 1. Pac-Man. Punch-Out featuring Mr. Dream. Uh, <laughs> Star Tropics, <laughs> which we've done before. Super C. Mario Bros. Mario Bros. 2. Mario Bros. 3. Tech Mobile. And Zelda and Zelda 2 Adventure Link. I gotta ask, has anybody here even, like, gotten close to beating the first Gradius game? No. <laughs> it is absolutely savage. Yeah, it is 100% savage. I'm more of a Parodius guy. Parodius Nothing is, wrong with Parodius. Parodius is fantastic stuff. Now, what is the, what is the Fight Tyson um, code again? Oh yeah, let me just bring that out of my out of my memory off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. I think the password is I'm gonna eat his children. The password is Count Ercula. Uh, okay, I'll look it up on my phone. My style then. is impetuous. With the, with the internet that I have available to me, I, why am I googling just Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> God, like every internet like video game celebrity uses this song in like their show it's a good song it's a good song brett <laughs> all right i used to have this memorized and just fucking forgot it like just hearing that song makes me want to do a montage of like plugging my console in or something <laughs> so you're having AVG, avgn flashbacks too right yeah Gradius is a great game, but man, the original one is a little bit wonky. Ah, uh, you're oh, so he not Tyson. Like anything like Mike Tyson. All right. Oh, I haven't played Tyson. I haven't played this in a long time, so let's see how long I last. <laughs> not very long. Also, I forgot. Second delay on the uh, audio cues. Is that native to the hardware, or is this because of the no, streaming this, software this you're is, using? this is because of the streaming software. Oh, fuck. It's because I'm looking Good at... Like playing this game. I'm looking at the TV, and, uh... Yeah, I have to go purely by audio, by visual cues, and I'm not all that used <laughs> to that. Oh, in case anybody missed out, that was, um, Tyke Meissen. Yeah, um, this was, you know, the, the Nintendo kind of couldn't have Mike Tyson in this game because of certain, oh, I don't know, going to jail allegations and, uh, a bunch of not good things that he did. So, they're like, yeah, well, they we have... Yeah, they couldn't program the ear-biting attack in time. 
<laughs> well, actually, that wouldn't be for that wouldn't be for seven more years. I think he was in jail for much worse things. Uh, but they're like, well, we have this guy on the title on the box of like one of our most popular franchises. We can't exactly throw the entire thing in the garbage. Ah, got a couple of hits in. Come on, Tom. I thought you were a boxer. I am. If I listen, if I box and can't see somebody, uh, and have like one of my senses cut off, the fight's gonna go pretty one-sided. Mm hmm. Yeah, if Tom just loses the ability to smell, he can't box anymore. <laughs> well, you gotta smell the fear coming off your opponent to know when. Oh to no, my taste. Yeah, the olfactory cues are everything when it comes to, like, yep. reaction times. Also, by the time Punch-Out happened, Tyson was kind of on cocaine, and he wasn't able to beat, to obliterate people in 45 seconds anymore. Because he gave up, he basically, um, stopped using his trainer, who was, like, brilliant, and started using a lot of cocaine. Mmm. Is that why he talks the way he does? Nah. Um. He just that's him normally. I mean, drugs don't turn everybody into Ozzy Osbourne. I think he just had that naturally. Boy, Ozzy Osbourne. Is he still alive? Tell. Nope. I think so. You can. He's not. Yeah, you can tell he was just fried. <laughs> was. Ah shit. Okay, I was going I was going to try and go for the uh, the quick kill on him. Uh, let me try that again. The one thing that sucks about this console is that you do have to have um it close doesn't you cannot reset the console just by the controller. You have to have the thing close to you. Not a big problem because this controller is about 3 feet long, about no not even like 2 feet long. Yeah, I was just about to ask you about your setup here, because the big the big complaint about the NES Mini was the fact that all the cords were about, you know, six inches long, and uh, right. they didn't include any extensions. I'll, I'll take a picture of the setup right now. It is right next to my microphone. <laughs> yeah, but Nintendo is always going to do that. They're going to offer you, like, the shit controller. And then the one that you can actually use for like an extra fifteen. Bucks. The NES Mini Pro for thirty-five dollars. Yeah, it's the exact and same as the regular like... NES Mini controller, except it's got like a three-foot cable. Yeah, and it's got like a piece of plastic you can put the controller into. <laughs> it's got a dock, a cosmetic dock. Oh yeah, if Ozzy Osbourne dies, it's not gonna be because of drugs. He's gonna, he's gonna like choke on a fucking piece of spaghetti or something like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Ooh, look at that counter punch. I guess when he does finally bite it, all the worms around his grave are gonna be totally cranked for like six months. Oh, you mean like when Keith Richard dies and the entire graveyard is going to be just like one coke factory? You know someone's going to dig up his They life. put him into the ground and all the zombies come out and just start rave dancing. <laughs> just put some EDM on in the background. I like, okay, so it's, it's, uh, debatable how true it is, but apparently, this is probably just someone at Nintendo Power fucking and having some fun, but, uh, uh -huh. apparently the one win on Glass Joe was, uh, Nick Bruiser from Super Punch-Out. Say like, what? The final boss of, um, Super Punch-Out for SNES is, uh, uh, Nick Bruiser. Uh -huh. Apparently the one win Glass Joe has was against Nick Bruiser. What happened? Uh, we don't know. Also, I got like that. Uh, if he stays down, then I just got a two frame punch on him. Nope. Nah, I didn't. I got the four frame. Maybe next time. Oh, that'll probably knock him down for good.
Oh, well, who are we fighting? This is Von Kaiser. Oh, that's, uh... Okay. Not Vodka Drinkin Drunkinski. Oh, he's not till <laughs> the very end of the game. Soda Popinski, or Vodka Drunkinski in the, uh... In the arcade version. And say goodnight. They got a lot of mileage out of Punch-Out. I remember there being, like, uh... An arcade cabinet that had like a thing that you actually punched. Uh, there are a couple of them actually. Uh, there was in addition to the arcade ones where um, the two arcade games. There was also a um, arm wrestling game that's technically part of. Yeah, the I think that's cannon. what I was thinking of. Huh. That features uh, like it's you're in an arm wrestling matches. And one of the people that you fight is Bald Bull in a wrestling mask. <laughs> Are you sure it's him, though? It, it, they have confirmed it's him, because when you beat him, you get his mask off. And... done. Uh, it, you know, the Wii... The, I really wish they made, like, more of the Wii one. Because the Wii... Uh, the Wii Punch-Out was phenomenal. It included so many... They included basically like, every character from this game. Uh, but, like, better and more interesting in the fight. <laughs> that reminds me, um, they had King Hippo in that game, right? Uh, the, and, uh, uh when, yeah. yeah, he was there. And, uh, when we met at PAX East, I saw a guy that was cosplaying King Hippo, but not, like, regular King Hippo. Like, at a certain point in the game, you fight him again, but he's got a manhole cover taped to his belly. Yep. <laughs> and he was cosplaying, he was cosplaying King Hippo with the manhole cover. Was it a real manhole? Uh, it, it oh. was like a styrofoam one, but man, it looked good. Yeah. <laughs> like he's just got a duct tape manhole cover on his belly. I was pretty, I was really happy about that. And there we go. I think he might be down for good. If you can counter him just as he hops back in. Um. He's dead. Nah, he's back up. E star. It's just kind of a fun system that they made, where it's it's just a series of tells that you I, have to. I always joke and right. say that Punch Out is my favorite puzzle game because that's it really kind, what it is. It kind of what it ends up becoming. The crazy part is when you start looking at, like, um, the speedrunning community for this game, and, like, there are people who, like, like, the buffer strats that some people do to get, like, the fastest kills of, like, basically the fastest kill for Glass Joe includes him, uh, taking 17 blocked punches at the beginning to get, to goad him into doing his, um, step back move faster. <laughs> Well, isn't all the buffering how that one dude ended up doing it blindfolded? Yeah, that was the only way to, to stop Tyson, was basically to, um... Hey, hey Tessie, get away, from, get away from that wire. <laughs> your cat's gonna chew through your Nintendo. She's, like, trying to, like... She's basically going up to the one wire connecting the, uh... The NES Classic to the, um... Uh... HDMI reader and my capture card. And it's, like, just low enough where she's trying to pull it down even more. No. Stream's gonna be cancelled because of your cat. Uh, now we gotta find Inspector Gadget. <laughs> oh, yeah, Don Flamenco. Yeah, this was at a time Nobody when... Nobody really remembers, yeah. This is at a time when they didn't mind you beating the shit out of racial stereotypes. get a fucking kid from the Bronx to, to beat up a bunch of, like, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can get him in the loop. Some boxer. Yeah, you have to fight him again later on, and he becomes a lot stronger. 
But for right now, all you gotta do is punch him once, goad him into counter punching, and then Nintendo Power Strats uh, knock the shit out of him. Really? There's another version of Punch Out in the UK? Why would they make it even more racist? Uh, the UK is pretty racist. Unless you mean the change with, like, Soda Popinski going back to Vodka Drunkinski, because, uh... I don't remember if that was a... Uh, that was censorship made explicitly for the US audience. That was for the US. I'm pretty that, sure yeah. that was just for the US. SJW collusion. <laughs> God damn those SJWs fucking things up since 1987. It's funny, because, uh, I don't know if you know, but, th you know, for everything people say about how they censor games in the U.S., uh, in Japan, they're actually way fucking crazier about censoring games. They're incredibly conservative. Um... Like, especially with violence. Yeah. Yeah, it's just different stuff that they look for. Like, Nintendo of America, their big thing was... Uh, you couldn't have any religious imagery. You couldn't have any, like, alcohol or cigarettes. Yeah. Like, they were big on religious symbolism. Yeah. In fact, that was only basically lifted within the last few years. Or trademarks. A big thing that a lot of people, um, assumed was, God damn it, Tessie! <laughs> Get away from that fucking wire! Oh, sure, blame it on your cat. Um... But yeah, they're super big on censoring, um... Uh, like, bloody stuff and violence in Japan. So, there's a scene in, um... There's a scene in Resident Evil 7 where you have to basically... There's a cop that gets decapitated. And you have to reach in... Later on, you have to reach into his head to get a key that someone planted in there. The cutscene of him reaching his hand in there takes about 15 seconds. And it can't be skipped. If you play it on the Japanese version, though, it um, the key will just be near his like dead body. Because they don't want to show you reaching into a dead man's organs. Uh, so right now, the biggest thing in the speedrunning community for that game is how to get the Japanese version of the game on like a uh, on a U.S. Uh, PS4, and people <laughs> arguing people arguing that it should be it's like a separate category because it's such a huge time save that it's basically like, hey, uh, if you don't want to spend like the hundred dollars getting a uh, a Japanese imported copy of the game. Uh, fuck you, you're not gonna get... You have no shot at getting first place. I can understand why they would make that a separate category, though. That's, like, the biggest talk right now going on there. Also, Frank Bruno's boxing. I have to, uh... Oh, oh, that sounds... That's... Oh, I'm reading the full comment now. That's bad. That is really bad. Wow. I don't remember this guy coming back either. Uh, no, you you only fight him in this uh in this round. He doesn't uh. Well, he's back in the um in the Wii version of it.
<laughs> is he alright? Yeah, if you had if you not. if you weren't winded, um this is basically a fight that if you get knocked down one time, this fight becomes instantly harder. Because you're normally supposed to have like 70 hearts to let you just block that barrage of twirling punches. Um, but if you get knocked down one time, your heart goes from 70 to like 5. So you're going to get winded <clears throat> during that thing and you won't be able to counterattack. Because that would be that would have been a one hit KO if I knocked him down at, at that point. It's actually really bad if you get hit with it. And sometimes, Clearly. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a KO. Uh, it only takes about four to five blocks for it. Um, but if it's uh, if you get hit by it and then try and block from there, it goes to like it can it can punch up to twelve times if you uh, aren't careful. So it's basically a you cannot get out of that, or you could, but. Um, I, I, I need the audio. I would need the audio for that. Uh, one of the biggest problems with this game is, uh... There's the, um... Tom, you're getting exposed. <laughs> Where do you really go when you say you're going boxing? <laughs> do you just go to Dave and Buster's? Oh, certainly, not, <laughs> certainly not playing video games. Actually, I... <laughs> hell, no, hell sure as hell not playing uh, punch out more often. Hey, if, if fucking Mike Tyson himself could get his ass wrecked by Glass Joe, like... <laughs> Now, I imagine playing Punch-Out! with an audio delay has got to be, like, the worst thing ever. Yeah. Uh, an audio delay and talking. We have to recognize that handicap, yeah. There we go. I wouldn't be ribbing you otherwise. Um, no, what else, what else can I say is... Um... You... When you play this game, it's almost a... You almost always want to be holding up, because your jab is, um... Like, the strongest thing you got. Uh... If you hold up, though, they'll be blocking. Like when he comes in this next round, you'll see when I'm holding up and when I'm hold and when I'm going to neutral. Uh, so what you basically want to do is like hold neutral and then tap up seconds before you uh, throw your punch to the face, and you'll be able to get it in in time. Hmm. Really, Mike Tyson actually beat himself in Punch Out later on. No, he beat himself in boxing. It was ridiculous to watch. I don't... Yeah, we still don't know how it happened. How... Okay, I didn't actually see that. <laughs> <laughs> We're goofing you, Tom. I don't... Dude, I don't fucking know. With Mike Tyson, he could do fucking anything these days. Yeah, he can bi-locate. Or just knock his own ass Listen. out by punching himself in the head. <laughs> Listen... He got a show with Norm Macdonald as a pigeon. Like, do not tell me nothing's uh, impossible when it comes to Mike Tyson. You're gonna have to go back and explain that one. Mike Tyson's mystery what? adventures. Is that like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, except with boxing? It was a show on Adult Swim last year with uh, Mike Tyson solving Scooby-Doo mysteries with Norm Macdonald playing a pigeon. Did it fail? No, it was actually pretty funny. Oh. Yeah, I really like Adult Swim, but there's... Like, they'll pick pretty much anything up. And a lot for of it is For better or worse. Just, yeah, for better or worse. Like, a lot of it... Don't get me wrong. A lot of really good stuff came from that kind of mindset of, Okay, just uh, give us your pitch and we'll look at it. Like, who the hell could have ever predicted Aqua Teen Hunger Force going on as long as it did? It, a little spin-off joke from one episode of Space Ghost where he gets, uh, branding shit. Like, 
Yeah. Became the big Baffling became enough. the biggest thing on Adult Swim history. Like the face of Adult Swim almost. They've got some good shows now too. I haven't guys... actually tuned into Adult Swim in years and years. Here's the thing, you can apparently watch it online if you have like a cable company subscription that's compatible with them. Yeah. So here's the thing, I don't because I have not paid for cable since like or I haven't even had cable since I lived at home. It's <laughs> similar slip. It's similar to <laughs> HBO HBO Go. Yeah, it's but um the list of cable companies that you have to go through, it's just the companies in my area are not on that list. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get knocked off by uh, Fold Fold. I'll see if I but can you can one. also just buy episodes on YouTube. Yeah. Like, directly from them. You can buy entire seasons, actually. Oh, that's pretty cool. Beat yeah. the shit uh, out of paying, like, $90 for Direct TV every month. Yeah, Listen, the no, one if thing... there's a series that you like, you could just buy the entire series and then just watch it on YouTube whenever not to you mention, want. Not to mention the stuff that really matters. They have it all on, a. Uh... They have it all up on, uh, up on, U up, not YouTube, Hulu already. Like, um, I think actually the best thing on Adult Swim right now is the Eric Andre show by, like, a long shot. That's all oh, Eric Andre is amazing. Eric Andre is the absolute funniest show, like, I, I remember watching it for the first time because it was just after Metalocalypse, and I didn't want to change the channel, and, like, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my entire life. <laughs> I really like uh, your pretty faces going to hell. I don't remember that one. 